they, they put the gun back in my head and pulled the trigger. But in all that process, I remember that the Lord's Prayer came out. So this is everything's going out in, in supersonic speed. And then nothing happened. You're still there. You're in prison because you wouldn't have been. God doesn't want you in prison. So then he answered that prayer. I got the response that I actually got parole. I, said, mm -hmm. I would walk in the room. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are glad you guys are here today. We have some special guests with us. We have Dolores and Arnold Annalise. How are y'all today? We're blessed. We're doing, awesome doing great. Today. We're Thank really, you. <laughs> we're really glad to have you. And we have another new face at the table this yes. week. And maybe a few more times, we will have some guest hosts coming in. And today, some. it gets to me, my lovely husband, Ryan Flowers. How are you? I'm good. Good. Yes. good. I don't have the graphic tee like Dan does, so <laughs> I got to up that game. But. You do. But um, maybe the prerequisite for being a male host is no hair. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're that. keeping the ball. The ball. Awesome. <laughs> a little sunburn, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're glad y'all are here today, and we just had, I'd had you guys on my hearts for a little while, just because your guys' story is so dynamic, lots of pieces to it, lots of things, but y'all are treasures to our house, mm -hmm. um, so much yeah. so that we wanted to take a couple a couple episodes to really get a chance to hear it all. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that just giving some context, you guys have been married for almost two years now. Almost two years so in May. Newlyweds. <laughs> yeah. Still on a honeymoon. Yeah, still, yeah. Still honeymooning. Aww. Still yes. holding her hand every day. That's Ooh, good. That's important. It is. You want to hold my hand too? Okay. okay. <laughs> um, but your life didn't obviously start out. You guys are, are, are newlyweds, but also... Yes in a mature stage in life. So I would, yes. we would love to kind of hear Arnold a little bit about your story. I know mm -hmm. that it's been a little rocky, but now God has you on this side. So um, tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. your life, maybe pre-Christ, just so for some context. Well, my life pre-Christ was, first of all, you know, we were migrant workers. So we got to travel all over the United States doing migrant work. And uh, so I met a lot of people and uh, different cultures too. Awesome compared to from back home. I'm from South Texas. Okay. So, uh, and my mom, you know, she uh, she tried to instill religion in us or church, really church, because mm -hmm. she wanted the best for us. You know, she wanted for us to, to know God. We went to different churches. You know, they're all in Spanish Spanish churches. And growing up, well, you know, it just but I really didn't go to church. You know, I remember when I was, she was sending me to Catholic church, I went one time <laughs> and then I didn't go again. I would, I would dress up, I was, you know, in elementary. And uh, so I would go and play hooky in church, <laughs> you know, and then I'll kind of time it. And then they came out, so I'll go back to the house. So I never yeah. got a communion or anything like that. So, okay. but it's just my mom trying to, to, to teach us about God in the only way she knew how, you know. And uh, so it was, it was interesting. So growing up, I really didn't know much about God, you know, or Jesus, or I had, had no idea. I didn't, I was more on the mm, party side, mm -hmm. partying, doing right. your own thing, your friends, outdoors and stuff like that. So it was like, and, you know, even after high school, that's when I started, you know, more delving into yeah, other things, uh, other religions, different ideas. Okay. And it kind of, just drew me away from God, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was an experience. Right. It is. And that, that path kind of took you into some areas where you got into a little bit of trouble, right? Yeah, a lot of trouble. The thing about it is one thing that I realized now with, you know, with even my wife, the Lord, as she mentioned it a few times, is that God had a plan for me. And I didn't know, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. he had a plan for me. And like, okay. And I didn't even ask what the plan was. So I remember when I started, you know, wanting things, you know, when you want things and you can't really afford them because you are limited for money, you start, you know, doing illegal things, which I started doing at a very young age. And one of those things would let me to go to prison. That was my first time in, in prison. I was 22 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm already, when I got my license at 15, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I was everywhere, you know. Oh, I, sure. Yeah, I was, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like. Freedom. Yeah, freedom. So then I started just getting kind of like, you're a grown man now, and I'm you're only 15. So I remember not knowing God, not knowing who he is. So I started delving in, in the drug business, the drug world. And that got me my first prison sentence. I remember I, I got caught with, with uh, some drugs over there. And uh, we were, I was buying some drugs in Mexico. And so the, what they want to know, they, they want to know who you are, who the drugs are for, and you know stuff like that. So if you don't say anything, they'll torture you. They started torturing me for about twelve days. Oh wow! And uh, and they had me handcuffed in this hotel. Me and this lady friend of mine. So I'm 22 years old. I know one thing. I was raised that if you ever get caught in this business, you don't say anything because you're gonna die regardless. Mm-hmm. So that oh, was wow. the mentality. That so I you was were keeping your lips shut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and and so then when I I wouldn't say anything, they they either gotta execute me or. Or turn me Let in. You go. Right. Yeah, because they came to pick oh, okay. us up, you know, from Mexico City to Monterey. So then they, uh, they said, well, you know, he don't want to talk to so let's execute him. So I remember that clearly, too, because it was like, I'm never going to see nothing again, my family. So this is this is where my life ends. So I was all beat up, tortured, handcuffed. So they, they put the gun back in my head and pulled the trigger. But in all that process, I remember that the Lord's Prayer came out, you know. And I don't know where I got it from. It came out in English. It came yeah. out super fast, like nano speed, like our Father who art in heaven, but fast. Wow. You know? And like in the whole prayer, not just the beginning, the whole prayer came out. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's a long prayer. That scene <laughs> and when you were a yeah. kid. When you were a kid, yeah. But I never heard it came in out. English, you know. Like she just said, maybe the Spirit translated from Spanish to English. I don't know. Because yeah. Spanish is my main language. And... uh so then I'm waiting in that process when I knew what's happening. Everything's like in slow motion. I'm waiting for the, the, the bang, the explosion, and the, like a knock back in my head in darkness. That's what I'm waiting for. Right. And the prayer's coming out. So this, everything's going out in, in supersonic speed. Exactly. And then nothing happened. I'm still there. And I hear them cursing, you know, the... the uh, they were called the judiciales, judicial police. You know, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, back then, and uh, so I'm thinking, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you think that you're That's still here, because you know that you're still alive, because you're still in the same room. Mm-hmm. There's, n- I'm not right somewhere yet. Right. And I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus, but this just happened. So they're cursing and they beat me up some more, pistol whipped me and everything. So then they, I hear the gun getting cocked. You know, and then it gets put it back in my head and the trigger gets pulled. But the same thing happened. The Lord's Prayer came out fast. Our Father, wow. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Like that's slow motion. It came out super fast. Okay. And clear. It didn't it wasn't garbled or anything. And the gun jammed again. Wow. wow. So I'm thinking, Two times. Yeah, twice. I'm thinking, okay, Lord. I didn't I didn't even say that. I say it now because I know him. But back then, like, okay. Yeah, you know, you know now God had a plan. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't even know that. Yeah, so I know I'm thinking, okay, now they're gonna try something else to kill me, right? You know, the gun jamming or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, they decided to, you know, it's like it didn't work. So let's just take him to prison. So they took me to prison, and I was there. In Mexico, you can buy justice. Oh, so yeah. I bought my way out of prison. Okay, in Mexico, and I ended up back the same year. I was there like ten months in prison. Mm-hmm. But well, even though while I was there, I did do some good things. While I was there, I became an English teacher, and I taught English to some a group okay. of inmates while I was there. Yeah. You know, and uh, but and that wasn't the that wasn't the large sentence. Oh no, that was just that was that. later. Yeah, I wish it would have become a large sentence. You know, seven to fifteen years, because then I would have not come back. And got the long, long sentence. Right. right. You know, everything is timing. Yeah. You right. Know? And since I came back, and uh, again, I didn't know God. So I came back. I didn't have nothing when I came to Mexico. I didn't even close. Lost everything. So I, I came to back home to Edinburgh. Then we took a bus to to Lubbock. Mm-hmm. And I started working in Lubbock. I said, I can do this on my own again. 
So I got up on my feet again. And then in 1988, I moved to 86 to Fort Worth, 1988. Right. I went, I committed another crime, more serious of this, and then me with a longer prison sentence. Right. And uh, life and sentence. Yeah, that was supposed to be that's a, that's a life sentence. In prison. That yeah. was that sentence you had told me once that it was it would have been your entire the mm-hmm. entirety of the rest of your life, right? And that was the beginning because then after right. that I got three more sentences on top of that. So right. okay, they're really trying to plant me, or I'm planting myself really. But again, I didn't know God at the time. So I remember when I got here in, the, in this county jail in here in Tarrant County, ended up in a single cell. They call them suicide cells because they, they don't want for you to have nothing in there. All you have in there is just your underwear That's oh, it. Wow. And, a, and a little mattress. So you no sheets, no toothbrush. So you're there. <clears throat> so I'm just like, okay, I'm here. So I remember I needed to make a phone call, so they took me to the to the, the orderly's tank. Cause they have all. Oh, yeah. So I was making a phone call, and I saw a Bible. I never read a Bible in my life. But I can't have a Bible in there. Mm-hmm. So I'm just looking around, you know, I'm on the <laughs> phone. We have phones back then. I get the Bible and I just I tear some pages off. And kind of put them, put them in your pocket? No, my <laughs> shorts. Your <laughs> shorts. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I don't really have a pocket. <clears throat> yeah. I got no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like go back to the cell. <laughs> and I tore some sheets of the book of Proverbs. I didn't know. I just like. Well, just, I just grab some. I just yeah. grab some, a few okay. sheets. So then when they put me back in my cell, I started reading. And it's like, man, this is, they're talking about me here, too. You know, <laughs> <of> this stuff. <laughs> you know, I did that. That's why that happened over there. And I did this. That's why that happened over there. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a revelation. You know, like this is. So that was the first time that I actually read parts of the Bible. And I was here in, in Tarrant County in the in segregation. Right. And it's okay. So I was there for, for quite a bit. So then after a while, I got transferred to regular population. Mm-hmm. And so I got a hold of a Bible. <clears throat> and I started reading. And I said, like, I didn't understand a lot of it. You know, I didn't. And I remember I had a, a, this man, his name was Gary Robertson. He used to come in there. And, and I was the only one there. I mean, you, that he, I was listening to everybody else. To right. Dominoes and cards or whatever they were doing. And this man, he had a heart. He'd be talking to me, he'd be crying. And he'd have his Bible and be preaching to me, reading to me, and he had water on his on his Bible. They was just like worn out, so many tears that he had shed different. And wow. so he's the one that that led me to the Lord. Wow. You know, and I didn't I didn't know. He just talked about me, you know. Are you saved? Uh, saved from what? You know? Right. I, that's right. You know, have you found Jesus? This is, Where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. So it's kind of if you're if you're a guy and and you never enc- encountered that. So what do you say? You know, right? And uh, and then the ones I got sentenced. Uh, so I ended up in at Cofield Prison. Back at the time in the eighties was one of the roughest prisons in mm-hmm. Texas. End up there. So okay, two weeks off the bus in there. We have riots all the time. So I'll get stuck in the riot, you know, part of the, you know. So you're, you go with the flow or you die. That's the way it is. Trying to survive. Yeah, you survive. And so then I remember I ended up, we'd, we get locked. That's why it took me a long time to get my, my college degree later on when the lockdown. But I had a Bible now. I had the King James, you know, and it's like the these and thou's. I don't know. So kind of, it was hard to understand. But that, but that was the time, like mostly when we were locked up in SAG, <clears throat> we had eight hours of me of reading the of Bible. Of reading, of okay. solid. Just reading. We had 24 hours, you know, lockdown. Mm-hmm. But I would read seven, eight hours a day. Just read, read, read. Yeah. And then, so I'm f- I'm kind of right. putting some stuff inside putting of me. Putting the word in. Yeah. And Did I don't know. I'm just like. <laughs> what would you say, looking back at that time, was <clears throat> like a revelation that you really felt like God gave you during that time in prison? What he, what he was doing he was actually setting a foundation. That's great. You know, and I didn't know what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I got to the point that I had one step in and one, I mean, one foot in and one foot out of in, in my relationship with God. And I did that for a long time. 
I have one step in and one. You know, <clears throat> the first time I heard God's voice, this is God. This wasn't the Holy Spirit. It wasn't Jesus Christ. It was God. And I was young. I was in, in prison. And he scared me because I didn't understand the language. It was like, now that we pray in the spirit, I understand it. But mm-hmm. back then, I didn't know nothing about that. But it was, but I understood the message. And the message was that I was going to hell the way I was going. Because mm-hmm. I was in and out, in and right. out, you know. And it, it. It shook. It scared me. It shook me to the core, to the inside. That that, that I was trembling, and I was not want to be afraid. And I've only heard him one time, mm-hmm. his voice. And it's just like, I mean, I I was scared. I was trembling. I'm I'm, I'm just me. I'm alone. I'm just like, you know, what am I gonna do? Mm-hmm. You know. And so then, that's when I started getting more serious. Because sometimes you get. You know, you get in there because you're in prison. Let me do this. And then I said, no, I need to get more more serious about this. About your you know, relationship with relationship the Lord. with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Because he's not playing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not playing you either with him or against him. You're it sounds playing. like he was pretty serious with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and he, he did scare me. So it kind of, it, I changed. I started, okay, what, I got, what do I have to do? Mm-hmm. And it was like, so, but he started, he started leading me, but I wasn't. I didn't know where I was going. So I, when I said, when I got there, I said, I have all this time. What am I going to do? I'm going to educate myself, physically, spiritually, mm-hmm. and intellectually. So right. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn because I already have all this other stuff in here. And uh, so I started taking steps towards that, to learn, learning, going to church. Mm-hmm. I was working six days a week, ten hour days in the, at the kitchen, how to make time go to college and time to go to church and time for recreation. Mm-hmm. And so I went to about four different churches in there. Cause sometimes we get the Pentecostal commence. I go there. Right. You we have all the these churches coming Seven in. Adventists come in. I'll be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, from, from Sunday to, you know, seven days a week, I was going to church. Yeah. One day mm-hmm. or the other, you know, so I was making time. And so I remember my brother kept saying, he, he visited me for, all those, my times I was there saying, you're in prison because you want to be in prison. God doesn't want you in prison. And I said, I don't understand. Like, yeah, I said, you're there right. because you want to be there. God doesn't want you there. God wants you out here with your loved ones mm-hmm. doing his work. All right. I'm thinking, you know. so it took me 20 years to understand that mm-hmm. concept. So finally, when I understood, when I, because I was happy there. You know, meaning that, okay, mean, not happy, happy. I'm like, well, this is my, my home now. This yeah, is you had, there's a, a sense of acceptance. Like, yeah. this, is where I'm, this is where I'm at. I'm going to make yes. the most of it. Yeah, you know, make the yeah. most, make the best, right. make the most. And that's, that's where I was at. And then I had other sentences that were pending. They got stacked on top. Right, so made your time even out longer. And added more time. <laughs> so then, now nah, I'm not going nowhere, you mm-hmm. know. And now, maybe with the other sentence, so, which was a life sentence, now I got a life sentence plus three more numbers on top. Mm-hmm. And he kept saying, no, you're there because God wants you there. You're there because God wants you there. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. You're there because you want to be there. God wants you out here. So you were in there and learning all these things about God mm-hmm. and, and getting all of these experiences, and mm-hmm. you found out then that God didn't really want you in prison anymore. He didn't yeah. want you in prison. Yeah. And so tell us how that supernaturally happened that you're even with us today. Because what I asked the Lord is, if you take me out of state prison, send me to federal prison, then I'll get on my knees and thank you. Because once I'm out of state prison, then federal prison is nothing. Mm-hmm. 10, 15 years is yeah. nothing there. I've heard yeah. federal yeah. prison is uh, uh, not as rough. Well, it's, it's rough. It is rough. They, it actually is a bit rougher. Oh. But what I'm saying is, there, I have a release date. I can I get see. out. Mm-hmm. From the state, I have no release date. Mm-hmm. I'm going to die there. Mm-hmm. So then he answered that prayer. So when he answered the prayer that, that I got the response that I actually got parole, I was, mm-hmm. I was walking on there. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, now I'm leaving this place. I'm going there. I'm getting out. That's when I ended up in Atlanta. 
Yeah. And I ended up learning about Andrew Womack. Okay. His this is ministry where you, okay. in Atlanta, Georgia. Great. And he's the one that taught me. I was like, I was I ended up over there, ended up doing 19 months in in the hole. So that was my school. That was where I'm a one on one with the Holy Spirit right there. No, and then you didn't no have any distractions. more distractions. I'm right, right there. I, mean, I can't go nowhere. I'm just here 24 7. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's when I had time to, like, he, he showed me some things. And it's like, oh my God. And prayers were answered. <laughs> uh, like, that's where you really got freedom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to leave. I think I can do the rest of my time right here. Give me right. Here. I can right. do it. I can do it right here. But then, once I learned everything that I had to learn there, even the 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 when he healed my my blindness there, because I went blind and he healed it. The Lord healed it right there. Then he, so he took me out mm-hmm. and sent me back to the population. So then that's when, okay, I'm doing work for the Lord now. Right. I'm gonna do work for the Lord out here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all the miracles He's done for me. Everything I'm gonna show people out here, and <clears throat> it it was fun, and it was like He He moved, mm-hmm. and it's just the stories can go on as far as sure, what I'm sure God has done there. Yeah, but He restored me because at the beginning when I became a fanatic, I read it and I loved it, but then I was, you're doing this wrong. I smack you with a Bible. You're doing this, you know, <laughs> scripture like the right, base, right? Base, you know, and then when I learned, it's about him, not about us. It's about him. That's good. And it's like, I'm sure that there's tons of mm-hmm. times when God yeah. protected you. I've heard some of these stories; mm-hmm. they're amazing. Mm-hmm. How has what you learned in there and in really establishing that God relationship, that one-on-one relationship? How is it? How is that? And how has been being out? How's that been for your life? It's been awesome because I've, I've been able to share my story in different places, and uh, it it helps people. And what 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 the best thing is is people can see it. I'm just, you know, when I left prison, you're coming back. You're not gonna last long out there. You're coming back. This is your home. And I've been out here since 2019. Mm-hmm. I'm still. All I have is God. Mm-hmm. You know, He He kept me mm-hmm. going. So why that I'm not here? Why should I let go of him? Yeah, he's good. the one that's you know give the, all the favor he's given me. Mm-hmm. You know this beautiful wife he's given me that he blessed Aww. me with. You know, and it's like it's him, and right. I everything he, whatever you need, he asked for. If you let him know, mm-hmm. put it right there. And Dolores, how what have you seen since you've met him in the time you, the the time you guys have been together? What what changes have you seen in, in Arnold? Well, I mean, in getting to know him, I've seen uh, I've seen him grow for sure. But I've seen uh, I've seen the prayers, how in praying, the way God's directed me how to pray, and how those things work. You know, in in a, in a couple, a marriage, and we hear this all the time. Oh, I'm gonna marry, but I'm gonna change him. You know, I don't like what he does here, but I'm gonna change him. But you know, I've learned that through prayer and allowing the word to do the work and instantly and God and he and transition takes place. So I've seen how he's grown. I've seen how he's I've seen the blessings work in his life because I've heard the stories and I've heard how, you know, where where he was at, how much money he was living on. It's like, man, you made it on that that little bit of money. But yet and out here and his giving and giving and I've learned that in, in being a giver and doing and doing and with no kind of um, regret in any way, shape or form. Right. So I've just seen the, the power of God, the word of God. And and I've seen him grow because at first he wouldn't really pray out loud. He wasn't really praying in the spirit. Mm-hmm. He was very analytical. He tried to <laughs> yeah, I think everything. we felt that. Very Just, yeah, very smart. Yeah, very yeah smart. exactly. And trying to okay, how is how, figure okay, things out? Figure. There you go. Mm-hmm. And so, but I've seen how you know the word of God, like I said, and and him praying in the spirit, and him becoming bold to start speaking things out and tar- start sharing when he really wouldn't do too much of that. Mm-hmm. He would pass out tracks and let that do the sharing. But mm-hmm. now his voice, his own. You know, he's. I know he's learned yeah. the power of God mm-hmm. that what God can do through him. 
So I've seen that some major transition. There. That's awesome. <laughs> Growth. That's Growth. awesome. Arnold, being being here, plugged in at Heritage, and I know you work with Ryan at JSMI too. How has that? Uh, how has the church really um, the teaching? How 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 have you grown just being here and plugged in here? Well, I was blessed. First of all, to when I met a uh, brother Jerry at uh, production, and I spoke to him the first time I spoke to him, I said, "You know what, brother Jerry? This is this is a gold mine here." And I'm blessed to be here, you know, because it's, and he said, yeah, this is, this is life. It's all there in books and CDs. And, and, and this canopy of favor is, I'm under it. Mm -hmm. Regardless, I'm under it, you know. And now that I know about these things, it's okay, I'm going to build on it. Okay. Where we have this, can the canopy, like I said, it's not, it's on us because we're yeah, one. Yeah, right. You know? So whatever. It's on me, it's on her, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, it's been, and I've been working with, with, uh, with Ryan and Dylan and Richard and they're awesome too. It's like, we have the, the, the perfect team because everybody's got their, their part of life that they share with you and it makes mm -hmm. yours better. Right. You know, and they share yours with it makes their, they can see mm -hmm. things and, and we've, it's like we say, as yes, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Mm -hmm. And every morning is me and Richard. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. That's and, good. You know, because that's our life. And so this church mm -hmm. is awesome. I've been here. To, I'm, go, I'm going in two years. I heard it's a faith. Mm -hmm. And. I don't plan on leaving unless, you know. Please uh, don't. No, <laughs> I get called somewhere else. But this, right. is, this is my, my home church. We're glad you're here. As a matter yeah. of fact, uh, uh, Sunday, the next class, I'll become a member. Cause That's right, awesome. I'm sign yeah. the contract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put, it, put it on paper. Put it yeah, on, put it on paper. Fun. Yeah. This is awesome. This search is like. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. now that you're, you've gotten in your. You're gotten plugged in, and mm -hmm. so you've seen, you know, our theme here is making winners in life. So mm -hmm. what does that mean to you uh, to be a winner in life? Well, I give all the praise and honor to God first for making me that winner. And we've gone out and ministered, and it's just like, it's like an honor. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like, God, thank you for this, for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And... And it's not going to stop there. You know, it's like that little box they have, 6,000. We're going to go over 6,000. Yeah. 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 Amen. Because we're going to take the word out there. That's, the, that's, that's what I, I like to do. Even, even if you don't speak the word, you walk the word. People see you. Okay. You bring that anointing with you wherever you go. If you That's go to good. church, you bring your anointing mm -hmm. with you. You don't leave it behind. You bring it in there. So that's what right. the, the Lord has been doing for us. You know, Being been, a living example. A living example. And we're walking it. We walk it wherever we go. And I love mm -hmm. it. You know. That's awesome. That's I will awesome. never let it go. Because that's all I have. And it gets better. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't. It just yeah. keeps getting better. I feel really like, Arnold, the sky is the limit for you. Mm -hmm. Like you're just stepping yeah. into this new yeah. season, and we're yeah. we're really glad to be along for the ride. I think it's going to be really fun. Oh, it so is. thank you, Ryan, for asking that question because I've <laughs> asked it a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to pass it off yeah. to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, it's an excellent answer. Yeah. So in part two, we'll ask you the same question. <laughs> so be ready. So be thinking. Yeah. Be thinking. Be thinking. But okay. we really thank you all for being mm. part of part of our church family. You guys are, uh, I know we haven't gotten into lawyer stores, but you've been here for years. So yes. we're so glad to hear about that <laughs> in the next episode. So let me just encourage you. I hope you all enjoyed hearing Arnold's story when you see him. Um, just give him a hug and tell him how much you appreciate where God's brought him. And then tune in next week. We're going to we're gonna continue with part two and hear a little bit more about Dolores and their life together now in their honeymoon <laughs> yeah. phase, yes. in their honeymoon era. And thank you, Ryan, for being a guest host. Hey, yeah, so. it's fun. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Uh, thank you all, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.